Romans 1 verse 1, 9 and 16. We'll read scriptures now. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. This is Paul trying to introduce himself. Paul, an a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. And if you see this gospel of God, you will discover that it's actually the message of Christ. Because this same scripture, read it down, verse 2, 3, and 4, and see what he said. He said, which God, this gospel of God, he said, which God had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scripture. So this gospel of God is what God was promising through the prophets. I'm going to do something among men. I'm going to do something among men. Tell men, give them this message of hope that something will happen in the days to come. So it was a promise when the prophets were saying it. Now it has been accomplished and God said, Paul said, he is separated to preach what has been accomplished. So Paul said, they are, the prophets promised it a four time. And in verse 3, he said, this is what the gospel of God is about. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. And verse 4, and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. So Paul said, I was separated into the gospel of God. He said, this gospel of God was promised by the prophets. He said, now it has been actualized. And what is it? He said, it's about Jesus. Jesus, who was made what? The seed of the seed of David in the flesh. That is the incarnation. That God became man according to the flesh. And then declared to be the son of God through the spirit of holiness with power by the resurrection from the dead. So the gospel of God is actually the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's why in verse 9, he said, I thank my God that I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son, Jesus Christ. And then he went to verse 16. He said, I'm not ashamed of this gospel because this gospel is not just to discover what God has done. He said the functional aspect of this gospel is the fact that therein lies the salvation of men. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. He said for it is the power of God unto salvation to every man that believes. So when God was becoming flesh, when God accepted to die, and when God decided to raise from the dead, it was not a show of power that I can do all things. When God decided to do this, it was not just to carry out a demonstration for people to talk about. He said, the reason we talk about this is because anyone who hears this and believes, it becomes salvation to him. And so he begins a journey of becoming like God. Why is Jesus God? If somebody told us that he is God, it would have been, deb been debatable. But he was the one who called himself God. It was the scripture that called him God. This is why we believe that Jesus is God. So what happened in salvation is that God had to send a messenger to save men. But no angel could do it. And there's no man anywhere that will be able to do it. So what God did was that God decided to become man. But now that God is man, it will be impossible for men to believe that he is God. So the first assignment in the gospel is to prove that this man is actually fully man, but is also fully God. So one of the things Jesus made us understand is that I am God. I came to save you. And the reason I had to come to save you is because I am not guilty of your sin. I am not condemned like you are condemned. So I can bring you into my own economy. So God became man. And the gospel of God is to prove that Jesus is actually divine. And so in Exodus chapter 3 verse 14, we saw the most boisterous introduction of God. 
when God wanted to send Moses to Egypt, this was how God introduced himself. He said, and God said unto Moses, I am that I am. Because Moses asked him, when I go and they ask me, who are you? Who will I tell them, send me? So God said to him, tell them, I am that I am. He said, thus said thou unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. So when they ask you, because when he encountered God, God told him, I am Jehovah. I was the one who encountered Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Go to the land of Egypt and save my people. Moses now said, if I go and they ask me, who sent me? Who will I tell them sent me? He said, when you go, tell them, I am have sent you. So God introduced himself as I am. And every Hebrew person knows God as I am. In John chapter 8, verse 58, Jesus was now talking to them. Start from verse 56. Jesus was talking to them and he said, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. The people now looked at him and said, Kai, this man has started going mad. From some of the things he has been saying recently, we suspect that schizophrenia can be close to him. Now he has confirmed it. So they now laughed. And then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet 50 years old. Have thou seen Abraham? Because they thought what he was talking about was about age and time. You are not yet 50. You say, Abraham saw your day. Where did he see you? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob have all died before you were born. They are your great grandfathers. How did, they see, how did he see you? Jesus now went to verse 8, 58 and answered them. He said, Jesus said unto them. This is not the writer of the Bible that said it. He said, Jesus said unto them. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Before Abraham was, I am. Now, the right English should have been, I was. If Abraham saw me, it means I was. But the Hebrew people know what he was saying. Now, see what they said in verse 59. Then took they up stones to cast at him. Because, and you know why? You know why they took stones? Because they knew what he meant. The moment he said, I am. He was calling himself God. So they didn't say you are foolish. They didn't say you are mad. They took stone because as far as they were concerned, that was blasphemy. Because Jesus called himself God. Anybody who will come under the kingdom of God must believe that Jesus is God. And that is the beginning of your interaction with God's benevolence. And so when the writers of the scripture wanted to communicate this truth to help our understanding, John began his writing from proving how Jesus was I am. Because he knew he was going to say it in his writing. So when he started his writing, he began the introduction of his writing as a way of proving why Jesus is I am. And he said, Jesus is I am because he is God. And he's not just God. You know, there's a way God operates. And I wish we can understand this. Ah. If God does not want to send an angel and God wants to do something, the way God functions is that he is always on his throne. Are you following? But when God wants to do something away from his throne, God will still go and do it. And God will still be on the throne. That's how God works. And he has the power to do it. Now, I was sitting there. I wanted to preach to you. I had to leave my seat to come here. That's because I am not God. If God is sitting there and God wants to talk to you, God will still be sitting there and God will still come up here to talk to you. The thing now is that when God sits there and God moves from there to come here to talk to you, the God that is sitting there is the same God talking to you. But the God that is sitting there is called father. The reason he's called father means he is Abba. That means he's the one that God came out from. So father does not mean I had to sleep with somebody to produce something. Father means I am where the movement originates from. So the one sitting on the chair is called Abba. The one who is now coming here to talk is now called the son. What the son means is that he proceeds from the father. 
So God divides himself. One God remains where God was and another God goes to where God wants to be. So the God that is where God was is called Father. The God that is where God wants to be is God's Son. So Son and Father does not mean one is less than the other. It actually means he was originally on the throne, but he left the throne, he was still there. So the one on the throne is Father. The one on earth is called Son. That's what they can't understand. And the Bible says, through faith we understand. Because this understanding is not logic. It's by faith. We understand. So there are certain understanding that is by faith. That's why you believe it. So when John was writing, in John chapter 1 verse 1, he said, in the beginning was the word. He said, the word was with God. And the word was God. What is the word? The word is the God that is sent. I'm talking to you now. My word is going from me. In the realm of God, when he talks, his words are not sound. His word is him. That's why he sent his word and healed them. That's why he sent his word and delivered them. That's why he sent his word and blessed them. Because his word is not sound. His word is him. In the spirit realm, if God speaks, you will not hear sound. You will see God come out. Because his word is him. His word is tangible in the spirit realm. The reason you are arguing it is because you are in the natural realm. In the spirit realm, when God talks, he goes to work. That's why he said the words were created by the word. So when God wanted to create the word, as he spoke, God went to work. So John was proving it to us and he told us, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word was God. Now this God that is introducing to you. He now went to verse 14. And he now said. And the word became flesh. And dwelt among us. So the word was God. The word became flesh. And dwelt among us. So the God that remains spirit is called father. The God that became flesh is called son. It doesn't mean this one is less than the other. This is God just manifesting his powers. Are you seeing? But many can't believe it. Many can't understand it. So they, they think Jesus is a prophet. They think Jesus is a messenger. Jesus can tell you, my father is greater than me. Jesus can tell you, I came to do the will of the father. Because his administration, his divine administration, as God spoke, God's word goes to do God's bidding. So that word becomes his messenger, not because it's less than God. If I say go there, that sound has a specific purpose now. It means it's to move something somewhere. So the totality of the expression of that sound is to address that particular issue. But that sound is bigger than all of that issue. But that sound has been administered to achieve a specific role. But when that sound was in me, that sound was exactly as me. Until it left me and I assigned a purpose to it, it was exactly as me. If I have not said go there, that go there was in me. It's exactly as me. It's not less than me. I'm not less than it. But the moment I say go there, the operational modality of that sound is now reduced to carrying out a function. So when Jesus said, my father is greater than me, he's not saying essentially speaking, my father is greater than me. He's saying as touching divine administration, my father is still the source of the totality of all things, but I am here now particularly for salvation. And so my scope has reduced to salvation. And so because I am only functioning to bring salvation, my father in whom salvation is included is greater. Do you follow? This is the gospel of God. This is the gospel of the son. That Jesus is God and he came to advance God's purpose. But he is exactly as God. This message is available on all digital platforms. Kindly visit our website at www.EncounterJesusMinistriesInternational.org for more information.